Hello and welcome to another session of the Let's Get Technical series. I'm Kavita Agrawal, the founder of VXP Invest. And today we are live to discuss about a great stock opportunity. This stock opportunity came in front on the Monday webinar when we were having a discussion and one of the audience members asked for an inquiry on the stock. Surprisingly, when I checked out the charts, it looked really attractive. So I thought, why not dedicate the Wednesday's Let's Get Technical series to this stock opportunities? Because right now the market is super bullish and I'm sure a lot of our watchers will appreciate getting to know about one more stock that they can invest in. So this is how we will proceed. I will take you to the chart of Orient Electric, where I will discuss what looks technically strong from the perspective of RSI, moving averages, volume analysis on multiple time frames, and we will build up our case study for this. Once we are done building the case study, then we will go ahead and discuss the target and the stop loss for the stock. So without much delay, let's go forward. So as you can see, this is the Orient Electric chart. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you to the largest time frame, and I will delete all the drawings that are there because we want to start the analysis from the beginning. This is the monthly time frame, right? And you might be thinking for a short term trading, why is monthly time frame relevant at all? The monthly time frame or the weekly time frame is very relevant because it helps us draw the right maiden trend line. What is the maiden trend line? It helps us draw the correct trend of the, it's very important to identify the primary direction of the trend and use trend lines only in that direction. Because remember, trend line, as the name suggests, is a line which is used to identify the trend and draw lines so that we can identify resistance and support. Now, I know that a lot of people are used to drawing trend lines, joining any peak and any bottom. But in my 12 years of experience in, with technical analysis, I have seen that is a very poor approach to doing technicals and studying charts with the monthly time frame we've now drawn the maiden trend line and we've also made a few clones of course this one is very questionable because this doesn't really catch the bottom in fact it just touches the recent most price but you know what before being very judgmental we'll move down to the lower now coming to the recent analysis what am i seeing on the weekly time frame two positive signals are standing out on the weekly time frame one there is a positive divergence building on the weekly time frame okay it is not yet built it is still building because here we don't have a bottom yet on the rsi but on the price we can see that the price right now is testing the same low level that was being tested on the price around end of may okay and also if you look at the volume is slightly heading higher so you might be thinking, what is this weird volume chart? So this is just the volume on the MACD. So I don't prefer to use MACD for studying the price. I prefer to use the MACD to study the volume. So what I have done is I've removed the fast line and the slow line, and I'm only using the histogram. So whenever the 20 days average volume goes above the 100 days average volume in any stock, it turns green. But within both green and red, you will see there are four colors, right? Because both in the green zone and the red zone also, the histogram can be rising or it can be falling. So accordingly, the color changes. This basically gives me an idea that how is the volume changing from its lowest point to its highest point and in one single picture, it also tells me whether the 20 day moving average is above or below the 100 day moving average and how much above and below the 100 day moving average it is. So here we can see that the volume or the volume was on a 20 day average basis significantly low compared to the 100 days volume and during that period the price was downward. Now we can see that the price started picking up, I'm sorry, the volume started picking up when the consolidation started or even during the decline the volume, so the volume was significantly high during this, was significantly low during this consolidation but then the volume picked up here because you can see that the 20 day average approached the 100 day average significantly right which was negative so on this particular candle it was not a good time to purchase the stock right but then this consolidation that has happened here we can see that the volume has been still increasing so that doesn't give us a lot of clarity but let's go down one time frame lower to see whether we can get more answers to our remove these drawings that i did on monday and I'll tell you what I can see on the daily chart. 
Now, before I tell you a lot more, let me tell you what are the drawings available and what are the indicators that have been applied to this chart right now. These lines on the price chart are the moving averages. The gray one is the 500. The dark blue is the 200 moving average. The green is the 100 moving average. The yellow is the 50 day moving average and blue is the 20 day moving average. Now, you will see there is another blue line. When a line is faded out so much and is thicker, it basically implies that it is the moving average of a higher time. Now, on this particular chart, what we can see, this is the daily time frame. We've come one time frame higher. I can see that a positive divergence on the RSI has been established, right? Why is it a positive divergence established? Because this low has been formed. This low has already been formed. Clearly, the price low is lower than the previous price low is higher than the previous RSI high. So this is a positive divergence. But what does the volume tell us? The volume tell us that tells us that there was a uptick on these four candles. What did the price do on these four candles? The price went higher up. So when the price started to go up, there was a pickup in the volume. But the volume pickup started fading soon enough. So the second half of the rally did not show the same volume pickup. Which means that if anybody had purchased the stock somewhere here, around this point, they should have understood that this rally is not going to sustain because the volume had already declined. Now, what we can see is that this decline happened and the volume still did not pick up, right? So, basically, when this part of the decline happened, right, until here, we can see that the volume picked up. This was a very good signal that the downtrend which has started from here is fresh and it's likely going to continue and that is exactly what we saw when the price went into consolidation the dipped when but then when the price again dipped we see that the volume did not see a lot of participation so this is what happens when the churn comes prices go up volume goes up means the price is going to keep going higher but when the price keeps going higher and the volume starts dipping it means that the price will also start dipping so that's how you have to see it Similarly, when the price is going down, but the volume is on the rise, this indicates that the price is going to go down. But if the price continues to fall, but the volume also starts falling, this indicates that the price is going to might. See, in technical analysis, there is no such thing as certainty. It's a game of probabilities, okay? It just means that the probability is higher. So what we are seeing is that the that one leg of decline happened with strong volumes. The second leg of decline happened with declining volumes. Whereas the upside that happened here, this particular leg of upside that happened on, to begin with it happened with good volumes, but the volumes did not keep up, which was an indication that this second half of the upside was going to be, going to experience another leg of downside, okay? So right now, because we've seen a downside also with low volumes, and there is a, another important thing that this particular low that was forged with the RSI positive divergence, we have in our hands a very early signal of a potential price reversal. How do I know that? Because the last time I did a similar analysis in the stock of Orient Electric, and I was able to deliver a profit of almost 10% for my members in just period of 20 days. So you can see here that RSI there also gave a similar positive divergence and a similar volume activity was noted back then also. We did miss the second leg of the upside, but no worries because usually in an upside or in any particular trend, if you're trying to trade, I have on the basis of my past analysis determined that my happiness index dictates but if I am able to capture even one third of a trend, I have done a good job and I am going to be happy with it. Because if you don't make up your mind, then trust me, trading as a profession can make your life miserable. Because no matter how low you buy, there will always be a lower price. And no matter how high you sell, there will always be a higher price. So make up your mind that for any trade that you take, if you are managing to capture one third of the wave, You've done a good job. All right. So we've established some premises here. There is a RSI positive divergence developing on the weekly time frame. You know what? It's too many things to remember. So we're going to start writing them down. So RSI PD unfolding on weekly pending confirmation. Then RSI PD on daily confirmed volume is dipping on decline and strong on upside partly no first part 
now let's go down to some lower time frame and because of the way this thing has been set up okay i don't like how broad this is so i am going to i'm sorry my representation on my charts matters a lot to me okay now let's move down one time frame further and we have the 75 minute time frame and oh interesting observations okay if you attended the session on monday and any of my past sessions on let's get technical or retail traders series you will have heard me talking about a concept of rsi range shift and on this chart let's observe the rsi range shift real time okay so you can see that the price has been declining all the way since the month of june 22 okay so it's been a long time yeah it's been a long time since orient electric has been in a downtrend okay now what i can see here is that this particular low that was forged right this particular low was forged and then there was a strong rsi positive divergence after which i had given the call to my members and we booked a strong profit there now here then the prices came back down and the rsi again breached the level of 30. so basically what happened was this see here also it came down to 30 okay so this part to this part we have rsi negative range shift and then it started to get positive from this part basically where it started sustaining above the level of 40 is when it got it it was in the positive range and then on the upside kept going above the level of 70 even though it was in a downtrend on the 75 minute time frame you can see that it did that right now the lesson for me personally as somebody who is also doing a past trade analysis in addition to doing a forward looking analysis is that once the rsi has gone above the level of 70 i should be a little bit more patient and try to play one more leg of upside in any stock right i might be able to capture just a few more points but there might be a caveat to this that the risk involved might be higher so at any point of time the risk involved is a significant part of my potential reward i will let go of that opportunity rather than risk my capital unnecessarily now what do we see again we see that here the level okay so here we see that the level of 40 again got breached right which means the price okay sorry this one needs to go a little bit higher we'll take the channel again and here 40 got breached and the price started breaching again below the level of uh below the level of 40 and taking resistance from the level of 60 okay now what do we see now we see that here even though the level of 30 was breached and the price was around the level of 216 right this part 216 what we can see is that even though here the price is still at the same level 216 the rsi on the 75 minute time frame is well above the level of 40. So this is a very good and strong indication for us that our interested our stock of interest has possibly moved to the bullish range okay so this is another strong point in our case study so rsi range shift sorry rsi positive range shift in 75 minutes so i prefer to use a lot of shorthands because i like I said, I have 12 years of experience, right? And I have been doing a lot of trial and error with my, not just my analysis, but also my system. For a long time, I tried very hard to maintain a Google Sheet with all my updated analysis. But then I found that the amount of time I was wasting in switching between TradingView, that is my charting software, and my Google Sheets, when my notes was written was humongous and I didn't want to do that honestly even if I have multiple screens which I do okay I have a three screen setup even then having my notes on one screen and my chart on one screen was leading to enormous wastage of time because I constantly have to move my eyes between my chart and my table my my excel or my google sheet and constantly have to refocus my eyes to find where is that stock okay oh this is the cell or this is the part that i'm supposed to read it's very hard and when you're a technical analyst when you're a stock trader right you already have to do so many things you have a screener template so i'll tell you the dashboards which i have so in order to do successful trading i have the following dashboards 
One is a screener dashboard, which helps me process my inversion technique for selecting potential opportunities. I have a monitoring uh, trade tracker where when I make positions in a stock, I add those trades in the trade tracker and uh, maintain my stop loss database there. Then I have watch lists on the trading view where I maintain watch lists for different sectors, different you know, stocks that I'm long on, stocks that I want to be long on in the next few months. Then I have a trade reconciliation template where I consolidate all the trades that I've executed during the day, change them in a proper format and copy from there and paste it into my trade tracker. Because obviously if I sit and enter every single trade that I do, because as a full-time trader, obviously my frequency of trade is significantly higher than somebody else who might be a relatively part-time trader. So I have a trade reconciliation template. And I also have a stock holding reconciliation template. Now, because I also manage portfolio for multiple clients, I have around 11 portfolios under my wings. I have to do repeated trade conciliations across all of them. And if I sit and do them manually, it's very hard. So I have a template where I just copy the data from the broker, copy the data from my tracker, copy the data from the holding statement. And it just tells me what's a mismatch and I can go and fix those things very quickly. Right. So these are all the templates which I have built over the last three years or four years, actually, since I started trading full time in the stock market. But yeah, if you aspire to become a swing trader or a full time trader, your focus needs to entirely be on the system that you're building. And if you have strong system, you will become a good trader automatically. Right. So this is evo the evolution of my system. Now I have stopped using the stock research. A uh, template instead I collect my notes on the charts itself. all right so I can see couple is saying that there is some lagging um couple I am going to post this economic times link usually the economic times somehow experiences slightly better slightly better this thing reception so maybe you can try that all right Moving on, so the 75 minute time frame, right? RSI range shift is very strong, and I have taken that, that down in my notes. Now, see, my decision making base is the 75 minutes chart, right? But I still prefer to look at the 15 and the daily time frames. Why? Because whatever I am hearing or seeing on the 75 minute time frame needs to be backed by the 15 minute time frame which means that the 15 minute time frame being a shorter time frame is much more reactive to the change in momentum and prices so whatever my observation be on the 75 minute time frame i want that observation to have been fulfilled on the 15 minute time frame already and also i use the 15 minute time frame sometimes even a three minute time frame to identify the pinpoint position where i want to make my entry or give an active recommendation to my members so if you're thinking that i analyze a stock and i make and make a position in it immediately you are wrong because the time frame between identifying an opportunity and making a position this monitoring period it can vary from one week to even two months sometimes so it takes a lot of patience monitoring and stalking before i actually make a position in a stock so the 15 minute time frame what it tells us that firstly there is a strong resistance from this blue line which is the 200 ema of the 75 minute time frame but one very positive indication on the 15 minute time frame is this very beautiful rsi positive divergence which embarked the positive range shift on the 15 minute time frame as well you can see how reactive the 15 minute time frame is in terms of the range shift also do you see this every time the price has gone into downward correction right uh, even a small dip can clearly be noted on the 70 on the 15 minute time frame very clearly noted on the 15 minute time frame it is extremely reactive see this is another reason why i don't make my decisions on the 15 minute time frame basis because it will just be too much work and honestly as a full-time trader i don't want to do a lot of work that is the first reason why i became a full-time trader and i know a lot of people find a lot of solace in doing intraday trading but honestly, I just can't do it. The amount of analysis that it demands, the amount of work and the short shelf life of the high quality work that you do, it's painful for me. Okay. 
I like to believe that the analysis that I'm doing with my technical skills and my system and my dashboards, I like to believe it's very high quality and I want to be able to withdraw much higher value from it. 